What's up, everybody? We are here live, HMB Live, with Facebook Live. Tuesday. I'm Jason. Tuesday, 11 a.m., that's when we do it. Uh, I'm Jason Ballen. This is Chris Haddon. Put our little name tags right below us. Uh, can you see the frame on your on your thing, Chris? There's a frame around this. doesn't look all that good. I see what I normally see. Got it. All right, well, anyways, there's a frame on around the video that we did. Uh, it doesn't look that great, so I'm going to take that frame out. Luckily, we have that functionality. Cool. So welcome to HMB Live. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how to finance your next real estate deal. Obviously, a pretty popular topic. Uh, talk to a lot of investors, and they're always looking for different money sources, financing sources. Some of them, some of them uh, obviously don't have their own cash to just buy tons and tons of properties. So we're going to go over a few different ways to finance properties with banks and private lenders, raising capital, uh, hard money, doing joint ventures. Uh, this is a topic we've talked about before, but I think it's really important. And I think one thing that a lot of investors don't realize is there's a time and a place to use all types of capital sources. Sometimes if you have uh, you know, enough money in the bank and you have good credit, banks are, banks are good. And you know, if you have a deal that you can last, you know, you have 30 or 45 days in contingency, a bank's great. And sometimes you need to close on a deal and tomorrow. So you don't want to miss out on a good opportunity. So then there's other private lending sources that may be better for you. So we're going to go through uh, some of those over the next few minutes. As always, uh, we really, really appreciate any comments that you have related to any questions. We will stay on as long as as long as we need to in order to answer every question that everyone has. So comment below if you have any questions. Uh, I'm just going to write questions here and comment on that. And then I'm also going to post a link. If you want to be on the show live, there's a link. Click on that as long as you are in Google uh, Chrome you can, or on your, or I think on your iPhone too, you can access it. You can jump on the, jump on. So again, if you've ever uh, watched the show, we do it every Tuesday at 11 a.m. We talk about business. We talk about real estate. We talk about finance. We talk about marketing. And the joke that we always have is, this is these are things that Chris and I talk about every day. So we're either going to do it on camera and we're going to do it live. And hopefully we can all engage and help each other out. Uh, and if we don't do it live, one of us is just going to walk into our office <laughs> and talk about these things anyways, because this is what we love talking about, business, finance, marketing, real estate. So we do, we do have a topic typically because we like to stay on track with the topic. But any questions related to anything, feel free to chime in and we are happy to answer your questions. So cool, let's get started. How to finance your next real estate deal. Like we talked about a little bit earlier when we started, uh, this could be a flip deal. This could be a rental property, potentially a commercial property, any type of real estate transaction. There is many, many, many options available. Many, many options available. And as we've learned, if you have a good deal, the money will find you. It is that simple. If you have a good deal, the money will find you, right? We've never turned down a good deal at Hard, hard Money Bankers. Now, it may not have been exactly uh, the structure the borrower wanted, but all good deals get funded. So let's jump in a little bit and let's just start with banks, for instance. Let's talk about banks as one of the funding sources. Now, obviously, the big benefit of a bank is they have cheaper money than most other funding sources, Banks are banks are inexpensive. That is the plus <laughs> of a bank. The downside of a bank is there's stringent guidelines, right? It's hard to get financing from a bank, especially on an investment property. If you put a property under contract and the seller is expecting you to close in five or seven days, do not go to a bank. It's just not going to work. They need 30 days to get these things done. Right, they need thirty. Th they need at least thirty days to get these things done. They typically re require a lot of cash into the deal. They require good credit. Uh, but at the same time, if you have all of those things, why not you use a bank? Because obviously, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, and I would also, since we're on the topic of banks, divide banks, which is can mean a lot of different things. There's many different kinds of banks, but mainly into two different categories. Um, now, one is going to be your traditional mortgage lender type bank, Fannie Mae, backed loans, which will work in some cases, but not in others. The situation where you want to use a Fannie Mae type loan, which I believe are the cheapest, I don't think it's going to get cheaper than that, is when you're buying a rental property in your personal name. 
If that's the case and you just plan on getting one or two or three, you can use any mortgage lender out there. Now, if you're going to be buying in a company name and you might want to do more than one or two or three, you're going to want to look away from big banks, away from traditional mortgage lenders and look at smaller local banks because they're going to do a commercial style loan for a residential investment property. And for most uh, real estate investors out there, that's going to be the right kind of situation. Yeah, absolutely. And a big thing is um, there's not many other lenders that are going to be doing long-term rental property loans. So you're really going to need some sort of bank or some sort of financial institution to help with some of those. So if you're buying rental properties, you need to make sure you got your stuff dialed in so you can qualify for a back-end refinance, uh, longer-term refinance. So you're going to need halfway decent credit. You're going to need some cash reserves and things like that. So just things to think about. Um, and again, as we go through these, most of the borrowers that we do loans for use every one of these things. They do joint ventures with people. They use private lenders. They use hard money. They use banks. They use their own cash. There's a time and a place to use every one of these funding sources. And you know what? We've done the same thing on, on all of these as well. There's a time and a place based on each deal, we, each situation, what works best. Um, all right. You want to dive in a little bit to private lenders, Chris? Yeah, I will talk about private lenders and just backing up one second. So you mentioned something that's an important point. Um, when considering different financing sources out of the ones that are available, people should look at what their goals are first. And that's going to lead you in the direction. Is it a flip? Is it a hold? Is it a commercial situation? Um, you know, a joint venture partner with somebody. All kinds of different situations are going to be the indicator of which financing source you should focus on for that particular deal. So um, yes, private lenders, happy to jump in on that. That is a lot of what I do here at HMB is work with our capital investors that fund our loan portfolio. So I've been doing this forever. I know it very well. Um, now, oftentimes there's a private lender versus hard money lender discussion when it comes to flippers, residential flippers, and there are pros and cons to either one. Private lenders are typically going to be a little bit cheaper and a bit more flexible in terms. But the thing that you have to realize is that investor relations is a, a real job. I mean, it might not necessarily be your full time job, but it's going to be a job that you didn't necessarily just because someone comes in and funds your deal. You don't really realize that you're at a part to your job description. Now you have to have the right system in place to pay the investor when it's supposed to be, uh, give them updates and whatever you've agreed on it. And, you know, in, in essence, just deal with another client because that's what they are. They're an investor, they're a client, they're a partner and handling whatever they may need is oftentimes part of the job that a real estate investor didn't anticipate. Right. And so then we'll talk about the opposite is with hard money lenders. They might cost a little more, but then you're not taking on that investor relations job. So, couple different things to consider there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a big thing that a lot of real estate investors, they they feel like they want to just jump into private lenders because they think it's cheaper. Um, they think they can kind of dictate the guidelines and things like that. And a lot of times they can. Sure. And we obviously encourage private lenders. That being said, it's got to be the right partnership and it's got to be the right private lender. You know, all of a sudden you have a deal, you're dealing with the wrong private lender, they will drive you absolutely crazy. They will micromanage you every day. They will ask for updates. If one thing is out of whack, it'll be, it could be a nightmare. So, you know, take it from experience. We deal, we, we deal with all kinds of different uh, funding and lending sources. We've been involved with a lot of deals. A lot of our borrowers have as well. So, you know, definitely go out and try to raise uh, private capital. It's, I think it's important. I think it's a good skill set to have. Uh, it's one of those things that you do need that type of cash available. Uh, but at the same time, do not pass out on a do not pass on an op, do not pass on an opportunity because you don't have a private lender sitting around waiting to fund it. Um, cool, well, all good stuff. So if you're just chiming in, we do this show, HMB Live, every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Any questions that you have, please feel free to chime in. We talk real estate, we talk marketing, we talk finance. Uh, we talk business. If you want to be on the show, you can click the comment link. I just put it on the screen as well. And uh, you can put your pretty little mug next to the two of us on the screen. Or if you just want to ask a question, you can comment below 
and ask any question and we will answer it. Uh, Ian Horowitz, thanks for the kind question related to when is our next meetup group. Our next meetup group is next Wednesday. Doors open at 6 p.m. at Nottingham's in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, whatever the day, whatever that date is, uh, 16th or something. I think that's when it is. That's when we are meeting. So uh, I know you will be there. And everyone else, I encourage you to come out as well. Have a really, really good topic. And you know what, Ian? To respond to that, I will put the meetup group link on this little thread. So we have that meetup group. Cool. So now everyone's got that. I commented that as well. So thanks, Ian. So any other questions that you have related to uh, financing your, your real estate deals, please chime in. Happy to answer. So we talked about banks. We talked about um, some private lenders. Let's jump in to hard money lenders. So hard money lenders, obviously one of our favorite sources. The only the only downside, and, I, and again, this isn't a huge downside. One of the downsides related to, to hard money lending is, is the cost, obviously. You know, a hard money lender, you, you should expect 13% in three, 14% in four, 15% five, whatever the case is. Hard money works on almost every transaction as long, as long, as long as you execute quickly. The money is expensive, but if you only use that money for a very short period of time, it is actually very reasonably priced, all things considered. Typically with hard money loans, you, you know, you, you, they're basing it off of the after repair value. So you don't typically need as much skin in the game as you would with a bank. The beauty of it is when we're doing creative real estate investing, these deals move quick. A homeowner is not going to sell you a property significantly under market value and um, give you 30, 45, 60 days to close on these things. They could just list it. They could just list it with a real estate agent. You want to move quick. Time is money. You're moving quickly on these transactions and that is why a lot of very, very large local developers that we all know, lo local builders, local real estate investors that we all know in the D.C., uh, Baltimore, Richmond, Philadelphia markets use us for lending because they know that they can give us a call and in a few business days, we can get these loans funded or any hard money lender for that matter. If, you can't, if a hard money lender can't get a loan funded for you in a few business days, you know, there's no point to use them anyways. You could try to buy yourself some more time and try to try to get additional sources. So these things have to move quick. So that's that's the big benefit of it. And we've done some uh, financial financial comparisons. And actually, I'm going to just show you this thing real, real quick. If anyone wants this, comment below and uh, I'll send you a link to it. It's a financing comparison between banks, uh, your own cash, private lenders, uh, hard money lenders, joint venture partners and things like that. And surprisingly, your cash on cash return with a hard money lender is actually uh, the best if you execute quickly, um, along with a few other things. So I'll send you this. We put this together uh, a while a while back. Um, but you know the important part of what we talked about was speed of this tr the transaction. And if you're doing these deals quickly, if you're flipping a property in four months and you're paying like thirteen percent in three points or fourteen percent in four points, it's only costing you eight, nine, ten percent for the money. So ten grand for every hundred thousand dollars that you're getting uh, lent, uh, because you're you're moving quickly on the you're moving quickly on these things. You don't need the money. You know, a thirteen percent return sounds like a lot of money, right? Thirteen percent return, annualized return. It's a lot, but it's annualized. If you only need that money for one or two or three or four months, it's only costing you, you know, three four percent for the capital. So think about that. So it's, it's, it's important. Yeah. Very good point. And yeah, maybe we should send out the link to that financing comparison because that, that's kind of stuff that people typically don't, they don't get that nitty gritty with what their financing is cost. They just kind of hear this or, you know, this costs 5% or this costs, you know, 12 and just roll with that. But um, yeah, I mean, different situations, like you were saying before, that is a lot of, of what we do. It's not necessarily, we're not a hard money lender is not always plan A. It might be, oh, I need a bridge loan and this has got to happen quick or, oh, I got a quick close and then I'm going to get takeout financing with the bank or even construction financing with the bank and we just do straight acquisition. So just keep keep hard money in mind is all we're saying. Obviously, we're, we're biased, but um, some people, it doesn't occur to them. They don't even know it's an option. Yeah, and it ends up being a cheaper option than a lot of people as well. Um, so it's important. And, you know, like we said earlier in the show, you never miss out on an opportunity because you don't have the money available. You figure out a way you figure out the way to make it work and it, and it does. Um, cool. 
Well, if you're just chiming in, Tuesdays, 11 a.m., we always do this show. Uh, We have our meetup group. It's coming up soon, next Wednesday at Nottingham's. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, real-life stories from real real estate investors locally doing deals that are going to come out. If you have um, anything you want to talk about at the meetup, email me directly, jason at hardmoneybankers.com. And... uh, you know, if you have a success story, you have a horror story, and you maybe need some help from the audience, happy to uh, chime in on that. Uh, we're talking about today real estate deals, but if you have any comments related to finance, business, real estate, marketing, we're going to be talking about this uh, anyways, so we might as well all be talking about this stuff together. Any questions, comments, comment below. And in this in this thread, if you want to come on the show, here is a link to that. Um All right. So let's talk a little bit about joint venture partners. Now, joint venture partners can be tricky and deceiving at the same time. And and the the reason why um, I say that is one of the reasons we created this financing comparison. If you want this finance comparison, just comment below, say you want it, and I'll send you out a link. But more importantly, the reason we actually brought this up, uh, we created this, is a few years ago, um, and we did a whole little marketing campaign about this. Chris was talking to a local builder. And he and the guy told him, "Well, I don't use hard money; it's too expensive. Uh, I just have a cat. I have a cash partner. We split all the profits. Um, he puts up the money. I do all the work. Blah blah blah. Okay. Well, it was hard to get this through the guy's head, but we did a breakdown on it, and pretty much." The joint venture partner is responsible for putting up the money. This guy was the operator. He was putting up the sweat equity, doing all the heavy lifty, lifting. And when it came down to it, the guy's profit was significantly less than if he just got money from a hard money lender at 13 or 14% and three or four points. <laughs> yeah, a hard money lender is not charging 50% of the profit. But all yeah. the time, the joint venture cash partner is. So it might sound like, oh, you just put up the money and then we'll split it because 13% is too much annually, but it actually works out to be a ton less. So that was, that was an interesting conversation and kind of an eye opener for us. Right. When, when we just thought, yeah, I guess when we were exposed to that mindset a little bit, since we live in private lending world, like we are obviously thinking about what we're doing, but, and then I think that really just showed us a lot that so many people out there don't know about hard money. So many people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, this show is not biased to just hard money lenders. We're very transparent, talk about everything and want to make sure whatever financing you're using for your next transaction is the best, just using that as an example. Now, obviously, there are pros of joint venture partners. Um, if it's the right one, you know, we could do a whole topic on just finding the right partner. That's the, extremely difficult to find a, the right partner. But besides that, let's just say you do find the right partner. In this particular case, that joint venture partner is putting up all the cash, right? So you don't really need credit. You don't need your own cash. You don't need a lot of other things because this guy's putting it all up. Potentially, if you structure the contract right, you don't even really have any risk because you don't really have any anything on the table except your sweat equity and your time. So another thing to really to really think about. So there's pros of, of doing it that way. But um, for the purposes of this diagram and the financing comparison, we're assuming that you, that you properly execute. Um, so we're just comparing apples to apples related to dollars and cents, the financial breakdown of it. You know, if you shit the bed and don't uh, don't execute correctly, all of these things are down the drain, right? Yeah, execution for another show. That, we can do execution for another show because that's yeah. a, a topic unto itself. Yeah. So assume you execute perfectly. The joint venture partner could be a good option, right? You may say to yourself, you know what? I'm willing to take less money because I don't want to put up any money and have it do it this way. But I will tell you that I know a lot of uh, borrowers that we do loans for firsthand that they came from the world of, hey, I have a partner that puts up the money and I do all the work and we split all the profits. And two things typically happen uh, after you start doing multiple projects. Number one, the guy runs out of money, right? He runs out of money because hey, I mean, not everyone has unlimited pockets to just do every 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 deal, right? So the guy was doing two at a time. And then after that, he was like, I'm out of money. I can't do any more. So two things happen. You either say, okay, cool. Well, our business is over until we sell a property or I go find another avenue. And that's when he hooked up with Hard Money Bankers and us. And then after he started using using Hard Money, he realized that it wasn't all that expensive. He was turning his properties quickly. His cash into the deal wasn't all that much. So then he dropped the cash partner completely and said, you know what? I'm leaving too much on the table. I already have some financial resources to put up some of my own money as well. And 
let's be honest, doing a real estate transaction is hard. It really is. So that is what you really need to be spending your resources on anyways, is figuring out the best way to execute. You know, if you go over budget $10,000, that is the exact, uh, in your construction, that is the exact same thing as paying $10,000 too much for that property. And you know, if that property was $10,000 too much, you wouldn't have bought it to begin with. So again, execution is a completely different show, but the, the goal and the kind of where we're trying to get at is understanding all the different financing components, understanding all the different ways to finance or to fund your deals and figure out which one is the best, not necessarily just for you, but for you per each transaction. And I promise you, promise you, promise you, if you have been in this game long enough, and if, if this isn't you, you haven't been in this game long enough. If you've been in this game long enough, you have used private money, hard money, cash, banks, and joint venture partners. It's just the inevitable. You need all of them in order to run a successful real estate company. Yep, they definitely all have their place. And you'll see that as you speak with more and more experienced investors, like you were saying before, they have used all of them. And not to mention, like, let's also keep in mind that economic and banking conditions change with the years. So, you know, bank money might be easy to get when the economy is good, but then you can see some 2007, 2008 situation where they're not lending at all. And then you have yeah. different financing options. So that's another point too, that I guess we can throw in there that things change with economic changes, right? Um, definitely yeah. something to keep in mind. There's a lot of capital now, honestly, like there's a ton of capital in the real estate market and that's cool. And it's made prices go down and that's fine. Take advantage of it while it's around, but also know the different financing options for when that eventually changes. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point because yeah, that's a really good point because I was thinking about this. There's a few borrowers that we work with and they have bank lines, they have cash, they have a lot of private capital and they do send us a deal here and there. And the reason they do is they want to keep the relationship because they know that some of those other capital sources may dry up in the future and they want to be able to pick up the phone and call us and know that we're there for them. And by doing that, we get a deal here and there. And on the other side, there's a lot of our borrowers that exclusively use us when they should be socking away cash and they should be they should be trying to figure out a dish other sources as well you got to diversify you got to diversify with all this um cool so jason miles asked a question i want to throw him on the screen real quick is, is it possible to use hard money with no money out of pocket you want to answer that chris you want me to jump in uh you can take that one and I'll cool jump in. cool so so jason it's a good question um, and I think the easiest answer to say is it's actually, it's hard to get financing from anybody without kind of your own somewhat cash skin and skin and skin in the game, or I shouldn't say your own, some additional money into the deal. So when we, when we do hard money and a lot of other hard money lenders do the same, typically the borrowers need, I don't know, 10, 20% into the deal. Now that doesn't necessarily need to need to be your own personal money. If you don't have the money, let's say we fund a hundred grand, you need 15 grand at the table. Maybe your monthly payment's a thousand bucks or so a month. You could bring a partner in. You can bring some sort of like gap funder in to, to help out with that down payment, that capital contribution, maybe to make the monthly payments. That's pretty common. Uh, we have borrowers that don't want to use a way to eliminate some of their own cash is they're buying everything on Home Depot credit cards. Uh, for the construction money. So let's say they need to front some of the construction money to get the work going, and then we're reimbursing them with construction reserve. So there's certainly ways to do all of these transactions without your own your, your own money, your own personal money. You know, they call it OPM, other people's money. Uh, but most of these sources probably require some, some sort of skin, even if it's not your own skin, but addi additional money to be involved. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just a realistic um situation with buying a piece of real estate is that you need some kind of cash either yours or from someone else so i mean it's not not a good idea for hard money lenders to be doing 100 percent financing of everything that's one of those indicators that if people are saying that out there that's one of those indicators that the market might be too hot because they have to compete in that way to get deals there might be too much capital in the market so that's actually kind of like the you know the financing that you saw for homeowners back in 05, 06 with the stated income and 103%. And like, that's one of those indicators that things might be towards the top of the market and be a little bubblish if anyone's saying that. So yeah, the reality of real estate is that you need some cash. Yeah. And, and some of these financing things, some of the financing um, uh, ways that we just talked about, you can overlap them. 
right? You can do like a hybrid between a hard money lender and a private lender. You use a hard money lender for a hundred grand and maybe a private lender for 20 grand. You know, that's, that's fine as well. I mean, get creative with some of these things. We have a lot, a lot of, I would say one of the most popular ways that we have some of our borrowers do deals with us is we put up hard money to fund the majority of the transaction and they bring on some sort of joint venture partner to put up the, the gap money, uh, either the gap, maybe to cover monthly payments and things like that. But I will say, Jason, like one important thing is if you actually have very little money at all, I would say your first thing right now is to try to figure out ways to get some sort of available cash. Go reach out to some private lenders and have them commit to put up some money, even if it's five, 10, 15, $20,000. And the reason I say this is the a real estate asset can turn into a real estate liability extremely quickly if you don't have the capital to continue to put into it if you run into a problem. And every investor at one point or another runs into a problem. And it's usually every transaction uh, because construction goes over budget. Something happens, right? Something happens that's unexpected and you need that capital cushion in order to overcome that. Like for instance, let's say a hard money lender does give you or somebody gives you 100% of everything on a transaction and your budget's 40 grand and the contractor screws you, whatever the case is, and that 40 grand turns into 50 grand. Well, where's that extra $10,000 going uh, going to come from? So all of a sudden, maybe you're into a deal that's that's worth 200 grand and you're all in at 150 and you need 10 grand, right? You'd be surprised. It might be really hard to come up with $10,000 when you have a $50,000 equity cushion in a property. That's just the reality of it. Uh, so make sure you kind of have some of those ducks, some of those ducks in a row. And again, other people's money is fine, but it's not just having your own capital, but it's having the available capital from yourself or from somebody else in case you, in case you need it. So hopefully that answered your question, Jason, certainly appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks um, uh, so yeah, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to chime in. Uh, again, we do these every Tuesday at 11 AM today. We were talking about how to finance your next real estate deal. Uh, we talked about banks. We talked about private lenders. We talked about hard money lenders. We talked about joint venture partners. We talked a little bit about every, everything. Um, any other questions chime in below. If not, we will, uh, we'll, we'll circle back next Tuesday at 11 AM. If you have any questions throughout the week, again, we, you know, we, we're pretty consistent on doing this at 11 a.m. every Tuesday. So if you have any questions throughout the week, feel free to comment below on something. Uh, our, our content manager and our community manager in our office likes to scrape uh, comments and engagement that we have with with everybody. So we make sure we can answer any of those questions. Uh, you know, it's a good learning experience for everybody. So, you know, we, be, being involved on some of these social media platforms and meetup groups and things like that, it's a great way to grow your real estate investing business. You just, you shortcut it. And that kind of leads me into our meetup group next Wednesday that we're going to be doing. Uh, just go to hardmoneybankers.com forward slash meetup group. It'll redirect you to the meetupgroup.com uh, website. And we're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of real estate invest of investing. And when we, uh, when we kind of thought about this topic, we felt like it was a good topic because it's not just somebody pitching about uh, real estate and talking about about it. And it's not just one person's experiences. The goal of this is to have uh, 8, 10, 12 different people talking about success stories or horror stories or something that's happened to them. They're local investors doing deals within the last re few months. And these are real stories of what happened to them. And you can learn so much more from that. I mean, you can go grab and you should go buy courses. You can go watch videos. There's tons and tons of material. And we put out that material. It's all free. And that's all great. And you should obviously do that. But you're get, those are all kind of broad levels, hypothetical. Like this is real stuff that people are doing. So I hopefully you guys all come to the meetup group. I think it's very important. Yeah, for sure. I think we're going to try out that that new segment too at the meetup where we're going to have more people pitching in some some stories and some other things that can help the attendees who who come to the meeting. So it's going to be a cool new segment. Uh, yeah, a week from tomorrow, right? Yep. Week from tomorrow. Uh, cool. Ian Horowitz, excited for the meetup topic. It'll be nice to hear from real people sure. doing doing deals locally. Absolutely. I agree. I, we all learn from it. I mean, th I mean, Ian, think about when you spoke, Jimmy Harris spoke, Mark Owen spoke, we spoke, Terry Roy spoke, Mike Green spoke. I mean, we, I mean they're all investors doing deals between the yeah. DC, Baltimore, some, some Philadelphia areas. They're real investors doing, doing stuff. When, you know, 
in order to qualify to be a speaker at the meetup group, <laughs> you're you're not allowed to wear a suit. Can't wear a suit. You, you can have nothing to sell. You can't be an industry guru, and you need to be doing deals each and every month, right? That's important. Or or proactively trying to. We did do one about uh, being being a real estate investor while running a full time job. Stuff that stuff that's really. Uh, so that that's really benefiting everybody in the audience that everyone can relate to. And my one kind of promise to everybody, and I can promise this to everybody, including myself, that you're always going to get one tidbit, that two hours of time that you're at that meetup group, you will get one takeaway. And I promise you there'll be value to it. If you get one takeaway, it's a, it's always, always worth it. So cool. Well, unless there's anything else we are, uh, we are going to chime out. And I got like things beeping. Uh, all, I don't know all kind all kinds of stuff, but uh, I think we're good. All, all this all this tech stuff. So uh, also, if you have any other topics that you guys want to talk about related to the HMB Live Show that we do Tuesdays at eleven a.m., any topics, comment as well. And uh, if we find one that we think would be benefiting everybody, we will certainly chime in with that as well. So again, guys, certainly appreciate it, Jason, Chris. HMB Live, Facebook Live. And see you guys next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Any questions, comment throughout. Thanks, guys.